let's chat about uh, purity in philosophy. And this is something that I, I, I kind of understand two sides of this, or perhaps there are more, and perhaps there are shades between. Um, the, the one side is that everything, when we're talking about morality, ethics, philosophy, this kind of thing, everything is either black or it is white, and there is no gray between. And then there is the other side that says, well, yeah, that's true, but in the real world, there is gray, and sometimes you have to just kind of put up with this or that, and and it's not all going to be perfect, and, and let's just kind of smooth out these sharp edges and, and think more in general terms. This is generally okay or not, and, and this is morally, yeah, it's imperfect, but it's okay. Well, there's a, 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 a philosophic group of people, uh, disenthrall, and it's kind of led by a number of, of people who... Uh, have come to the worldview, and, and I can't really argue with them, but they've come to the worldview that there are there's a, a, a bright line or there's a, 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 a place where things change from either being uh, immoral to moral, but then a, uh, there are a lot of things within that moral area that can be uh, aesthetically preferable or not. So, for example, and that, that line is the initiation of violence. So, an example would be someone who looks at somebody else and, and gives them a, a nasty look. Well, that is not initiating violence, so therefore it is not immoral to do that. However, it is aesthetically, it's, it's not as preferable as if the person had smiled uh, at the other person. Well, I don't know. I was challenged by, uh, I believe it was Patrick Smith of Disenthrall. Maybe it was uh, Christian. I'm not sure if it was Christian Moore or Patrick Smith, but but they challenged me when I said, I, g I gave an example of, of I live out in, in the Rocky Mountain area in ranching country. And I said, okay, well, the rancher down the street will call him Slim. Slim says, hey, you better not make kissing noises at my wife when she walks by, um, or I'll kick your butt. Well, uh, making kissing noise is not initiating violence. However, him kicking somebody's butt would be initiating violence. And so, there, either Christian or Patrick's point was, if is that okay with you, Shepard, if your neighbor is willing to initiate violence against you? And then I said, well, you know, in this situation, yeah, the guy kind of, he's not a philosopher. He doesn't care about that stuff. He's not going to. He just has this preference that um, nobody makes kissing noises at his wife when she walks by. And, and he's made it very clear, this is what will happen if you, you do. I'll initiate violence and kick your butt. And I'm okay with that. Don't love it, but I'm okay with it. And they said, so you're okay with being friends. You would be friends with somebody. You wouldn't shun someone who initiates violence. And I said, well, no. But, but I saw their point, and they were 100% correct, that that is you know, not a pure philosophic thing if I'm okay with someone initiating violence in certain circumstances. And then I would think, you know, well, we could take this example even further and say, well, what if instead of making, uh, you know, kissing noises is what would set the guy off if he saw a, a person who was shorter than, than six foot tall, that that was just something that bugged him. And if he sees anybody less than six feet tall walk by, he's going to kick their butt. Would that be okay with me? And what if it was... Well, I don't like Jews, so if a Jew walks by, I'm going to kick their butt. At what point is it okay to have somebody who says, I will initiate violence if other people are or do something that I don't like? And so this is what brings me full circle to this idea of 
this this absolute black and white bright line uh, understanding of philosophy. And I must agree, admit, uh, concede that it is in fact better to be pure, to be pure philosophically. Absolutely, I agree. I wish that old Slim would rethink his perspectives and would say that he would never initiate violence. He would only respond to initiated violence. Yep, love it. That'd be great. But Slim isn't going to do that, and neither are roughly 7 billion other people. There are a few million, maybe, that, that will agree not to initiate violence against others, but all the rest of them have these rules. Why well, I want to initiate violence unless... You know, somebody's smoking weed, or unless they're getting gay married, or unless they are speeding, or unless this or that or the other thing. So, how how then do we, when we step out of the 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 library where we're we're hanging out and smoking cigars and drinking cognac and, and arguing the finer, more detailed points of philosophy, when we step out into the real world? How do we determine uh, what's cool, what's not cool, how, 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 you know, if we're okay with certain things? And I don't know what your answer is uh, at the moment. This is late 2021. I'm kind of an easygoing, uh, practical kind of guy. And for me, I, I would be very happy to have that conversation with someone uh, about, you know, what standard are we going to have? for this conversation. Are we going to have perfect, pure philosophy? Or are we going to just say, yeah, this is how I think it ought to be, but this is how it really is, and I guess I'm okay with that. Um, how, how are we going to do that? Well, my thinking is uh, I'm, I'm just going to kind of go along to get along. And I meet people who don't uh, don't have the, the philosophy that I do. They don't haven't put thought into it. They don't have my worldviews. They have very different values. And I, of course, love providing content that that helps people reevaluate how they think and, and either firm up their position or maybe come up with a new position. Um, but when it really comes down to it, I'm okay with Slim being my neighbor. I will, you know, hope that he'll change in time, but if he doesn't, I'll still help him, you know, dig his irrigation ditches, and I'll still, you know, pull him out of the snow when he's stuck, and we'll we'll be neighbors, and we'll get along just fine. Now, we're not going to sit there smoking cigars and drinking cognac and talking about philosophy at, at high levels anyway, but, but that's okay. That's not Slim's thing, and not everybody has to be a perfect, pure uh, philosopher. And until I find a place where everyone is that, maybe it's Galt's Gulch, I don't know. But until I find that place, I'm kind of okay with most of my neighbors being, you know, having their quirks where they're imperfect in their evaluations of the world, their evaluations of philosophy and, and, and what we all ought to do and, and what our standards are, what we'll put up with, what we won't. Um, I'm, I'm okay with I'm okay with people being imperfect. Not my preference, but I'm okay with it. What about you? Where, where's that? Where's that line for you? And actually, I would ask this of everyone, including Patrick and, and Christian and Ryan and, and and the the internal team there at Disenthrall, and then kind of the the wider circle of folks, uh, James Freeman and 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 Sherry and and some of the people who are you know philosophic leaders in the movement. How do you propose, if, if you take the other side and say, nope, it's a bright line thing, if it isn't right, I don't condone it, I wouldn't tolerate it, I wouldn't have a friend like that, I wouldn't associate with those people, how then do you live in our imperfect world? That's that's my question. Um, and my thinking is that I'm not going to do something that's immoral, but if the, the person across the street, if old Slim... He's not going to change without me. He's probably not going to change with me either. But if I can spend some time leaning over the fence over a six-pack chit-chatting with him, then maybe I can drop some hints about 
philosophic purity and about intellectual consistency and these things. And, and maybe over time I can help enlighten this person to be a, a, a little bit more how deeper in their philosophic thought. In, in, so I, I don't know. What, what do you think? If you don't agree that you should hang out and kind of witness to people, um, how then do you live your life? Do you just have in your circle a virtual few friends who meet the 99.9% purity test or not? How do you work that? I'm curious. Thank you for spending your valuable time uh, listening to some of my thoughts, my ponderings. Uh, hopefully it makes you think. Hopefully it makes you uh, eh, just consider what your standpoint is on this. Look forward to hearing it from you.